Today, we are going to review a book that I did a story time about. Um, interesting story time, please um, <laughs> watch my story time about how I got this book. A little bit emotional, a little bit sad, a little bit happy as well, you know. So, a little bit about life, really. So, we are going to review Agatha Christie, the first book I'm reviewing on my channel, Agatha Christie. My story time will tell you why all these cigarette marks are on here. It will also tell you why this book is super old um, and to tell you why I really love this book. The book, not the review. We're getting into the review. So let's get into the review. Cat Among the Pigeons. One, actually, one of the reasons why I decided to make this my first um, YouTube review is that I said to a friend of mine, um, he saw the book and he said, oh, which book is that? And I was explaining, oh, it's Agatha Christie, have you heard of her? And he said, no. He said he's never heard of Agatha Christie. Never. Can you believe that? He's like, oh, Shakespeare is the most famous author. <laughs> like, okay, I'm reviewing this Agatha Christie novel first because if you don't know who she is, what have you been doing with your life? Seriously, what have you been doing with your life? Come into the 21st century. So, this is a murder mystery. Anyway, let's, this is a murder mystery. Um, so, Agatha Christie, let's do five facts. In this channel, what I'd like to do is I'll do five facts and then I will review the book and tell you what I think about it. So, five facts about her. She's actually British. She's from Turkey um, in southwest i think southwest england in devon and she's the third child the baby of the family and um, her mom was a wonderful storyteller who used to tell her lots of stories when she was a child so she grew up enjoying that actually her father was an american man and they were a very middle class family so number two two <laughs> not one two number two is i named number two shocking because guess what she taught herself to read at the age of five i mean how many of us can say we taught herself to read she actually taught herself to read at the age of five because she enjoyed reading and learning and in my research it was said that her mom didn't want her to learn to read too early but because her older siblings had left home she was bored and she taught herself to read <laughs> kudos to her and then number three fact number three three one two three i named that fact wow factor because this is something i actually didn't know um she is the best selling novelist of all time like forget shakespeare mm -mm. she's the best selling novelist of all time and i thought that was quite interesting because somehow i just wouldn't have thought that it was a woman who would be the best-selling author of all time i just thought it would be shakespeare to be honest with you i thought it would be shakespeare that would be the best-selling author of all time um she has 66 detective novels 14 short stories and she also bombshell she also has the longest running play the mouse trap <sighs> okay this is something I didn't know either. I just always assumed that it was Cats that was the longest running play. And I must admit, I've never heard of The Mousetrap. Um, yeah, so I'm impressed. And you know, all well to girl power and stuff like that. So she's written 66 books, 14 short stories, longest running play, The Mousetrap. She, she's she's doing the thing you know she's doing the thing and um <laughs> i'm really impressed to be honest with you she's doing the thing listen to this fact she has sold over a billion copy not a million not two million not a billion copy copies of books and that's in only in the english language in translations she's also sold a billion can I keep saying can you believe that but i'm super super impressed um i just like when women are doing their thing you know so fact number four i named that one we are happy 
because she wanted to be a concert pianist. Now, Mrs. Christie, mm -mm. we don't want you to be a concert pianist because guess what? We enjoy the fact that you've written books that we love, so we're happy. So she wanted to be a pianist. However, she was a shy person in front of strangers, in front of people that she didn't know. And so um, she didn't become a concert pianist. She became an author instead. Yay, we're happy because we enjoy your books. Um, her name, number five, her name, now... This, so I keep saying I'm surprised, but I'm really, really surprised that Christy is her married name. So Christy's actually her husband's name. Um, I think if I wrote a book, I wouldn't use my husband's name. I would use my name. My, but I guess it was different times and stuff. I always thought authors wouldn't actually use. They'll use the, the name they were born with, does that make sense? Um, but then that's just me and my assumptions, which is never, never good. If you follow Dr. Grandy, please follow Dr. Grandy. Um, he's a psychologist on YouTube and he says never make assumptions. So never make assumptions. Um, so yes, yeah, so the husband, um, she met him, they got married. His name's Christy. She got married in 1914 and he was actually um, in the Royal Air Force or something or the Royal Fl Flying Corps but he was in World War One, so was she, he was in France um, I guess flying his aeroplanes or whatever they flew those days and she was in um, in Turkey, in Devon and Turkey anybody know the pronunciation? drop it down below, Turkey I think and Brian, if you're watching my video, you're good at things like that. So just let me know the pronunciation. Um, Torquay and in Devon, and she worked in the hospital with the Red Cross. So they both took part. So that's my five facts about her. I hope you were excited as I am <laughs> to learn all that information. So in this section, we're going to call it the book. So this book, this particular book, um, I looked inside and it was published in 2004, but actually this, the Cat Among the Pigeons was first published in 1959 and then republished in 1960. So that's how old it is, 1959. Um, let me give you my summary. Um, this is my thoughts, of course, you don't have to agree with my thoughts but it would be nice if you enjoy it <laughs> I tell you that you enjoy it so um well where should I start let's start with the back of the book and I'll start at the back of the book because people always people who don't read you know people are not readers I don't say don't read but people are not readers they always ask me how do you choose a book when you go to the bookshop how do you choose a book and that's how we well that's how I choose a book I read the back of the book and the back of the book is like a summary of the story in the book and that will kind of give you you know pique your interest so to speak so the back of the book says late one night two teachers investigate a mysterious flashing light in the sports pavilion while the rest of the school sleeps there among the lacrosse sticks they stumbled upon the body of an unpopular games mistress shot through the heart from point blank range the school is thrown into chaos when the cat strikes again unfortunately schoolgirl julia updike knows too much in particular she knows that without her pyro her cue pyro oh my god correct me again her cue pyro paul row they say in the um in the series they say paul row i guess my french is not good um paul row help she will be the next victim so that's that's how you choose a book. So if you go into a bookshop and you're wondering what book do I choose? Oh, it's got thousands of books. That's how you choose a book. You choose a book by reading the back of the book and it will give you a little summary of the story and then you'll think, do I want to read the story or not? Okay, so the backdrop of the plot begins. <laughs> it actually begins um, in the school. 
now the main character is the school is, is called Meadow Bank School and it is run by a Mrs. Bulstrode you know like a headmistress Mrs. Bulstrode the main character is Julia Upjohn and um, she is quite an interesting girl she's got a friend Jenny she is um, also a secondary character in the book um, so the, the story surrounds Julia's letters to her mom um, as, I, as the back of the book says the murder mystery kicks off I love murder mystery by the way the murder mystery kicks off with a dead body in the sports pavilion now this book it, it's got everything for lovers of murder mystery it's got murder of course number one it's got kidnapping of a princess it's got coops espionage in foreign lands, stolen gems, rumours, people are not what they appear to be, imposters, school politics, just dropping a little bit of school politics, you know, there's always politics in school, speaking from somebody who works in a school, there's always a po always politics in school, infighting among the staff, blackmail, people basically using names that their parents did not give them at birth, <laughs> and they did not change to legally, so, you know, um, and to wrap it all up, confessions <laughs> at the end confessions 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 absolutely beautiful um poor role <laughs> i still hope i'm saying that right poor role um in this book it's, it's i think it's the only Gatha christie poor role book i've read that he is admitted so late into the novel he's admitted like i'd say probably in the the Two thirds. You've read two thirds of the novel, and he's there. Probably not as much as two thirds. Maybe half of the novel before he makes an appearance, which is rare. And I watch Cats Among the Pigeons as a series on the television, BBC, and he was there from the beginning. So it's, I'm so happy that I read the book because the book is a little bit different from the story. But I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy the twist and the turns um the letters that julia wrote to her mom was funny it felt like she was a teenage girl you know it really depicts a teenage girl i can see my niece writing me that letter you know and it she i got the crystal really captured the essence of a teenage girl in those um letters what i like about the book is the way she, the way the author describes the school, I felt like I was at the school. I could smell the air, I could see the sports pavilion, I could see the tennis court, I could see Mrs. Bolstrode's office, you know? It's Miss Bol, Miss, not Mrs. Bolstrode office. It's, it's quite interesting. She, she really captured the essence of a boarding school or of a school like that in those days. She re I could just smell the air. It was absolutely wonderful. So we're moving on to quotes. My fav I've got two quotes here. My favorite, a letter that Julia wrote to her mom. Listen to this, this is so teenage-like. She says, Miss Bolstrode is rather a lamb, but she's pretty frightening too, or can be. <laughs> Isn't that something that a teenage girl would say? You know, um, I don't know if she'd say that to her mom. She probably said that says that to her friends or something. Um, and then the second one comes from Paul Rowe. Um, she, when she was introducing Paul Rowe, she says, Paul Rowe had prepared to beat down an insular prejudice that a headmistress might have against aged foreigners with pointed patent leather shoes and large moustaches. Girl. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, hmm. Headmistresses out there, have you got a prejudice against foreigners with patent leather shoes and moustaches? Let me know. Tell me. Tell me in the comments. Do you know? That really cracked me up. In conclusion, to everything though, um, I finished the book, the book in three days and I'm very busy at work but I did finish the book in three days. I actually for the first time in a long time when I read this book did what I did as a teenager which is um, stay up late <laughs> to finish a book. Um, nowadays I don't stay up late to finish a book you know if I'm tired I'll go to bed but when I was a teenager I would stay up until one and two to really finish a book and enjoy it but yeah so this book took me back to those teenage years and kudos to my mom she is a great reader and I got my reading from her because she 
growing up she was always reading a book so kudos to my mom for in, for encouraging me to read for introducing me to reading thank you very much mommy um yeah so the characters were engaging i liked julia she was lovable um actually the headmistress was lovable as well i would say um I would give this book a nine and three quarters out of ten and I think the quarter is the quarter that I subtracted is because at some point I think Julia is just a little bit unbelievable it's a tad bit unbelievable but I loved her anyway um is there any book that was similar to this one that I've read I must say only other Agatha Christie's I've read that um I really taken me back to my teenage years of when I used to you know I really read because I had no time of course um yeah but that's my review of this wonderful novel please watch my video on how I got this novel because uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a story as I said before now thank you so much for tuning into my youtube um channel please like share subscribe and share it with your family you know um this is a family channel bring all your family in tell them to like share subscribe as well and please leave a comment in the um down below so we can interact with each other